It is your instant reaction for Leicester City 1, Everton 1. I am Matt Jones, your host this evening, joining me, oh, Warren Doyle. It's going to be Dave Downey. Uh, just a reminder to everybody before we get started, uh, if you are a regular listener, if you don't subscribe to us on YouTube or on Spotify or any podcast, please do so. It all helps. Uh, of course, do leave a comment. A rating and a review on these shows, they all help, uh, certainly. As the Knights draw in and Everton still search for their first win of the new Premier League season. And like I said, Warren is with me now. We should be getting Dave any second now. Uh, Warren, great to have you on, mate. Uh, find ourselves chatting about Everton on a Saturday night again, throwing away a lead. Uh, I, I, I kind of want to be positive on this because it's been so negative over the last few weeks. But it's hard, isn't it? Because that, that felt, that really felt today like one where it was there for the taking for us. And after an hour, you're so comfortable, you were so dom- dominant. And it's a bit of a good punch to come away about the three points. Yeah. The, the game was there. We looked, we looked really, really good for it. Like you said, the first hour looked brilliant. I thought we were the much better team. But it's the same old Everton, isn't it? I happened to come across a tweet earlier, and I'll just read it out if you don't mind. It's, I don't know if he's a listener or not, but. Uh, at Preno67 said, same every game, start well, score first, miss chances to kill it off. Dice takes off the outlet of pace players, retreat to edge of own box, await mistake, concede. And that seems to be us in a nutshell. And you could, again, there was an, I've said this word a lot the last couple of days, but there was an inevitability about it. You felt that if we didn't take those chances that we should have, Leicester were going to always have one to come back in it. And, you, you, I've had a few hours to reflect on it and the initial annoyance and the initial frustration, I, I am still feeling that way. But we played really well in spells and I, I mean, I put a tweet out earlier just so that going to, if you're going to still defend set pieces the way we currently are, expect the worst and it's come back to haunt us, come back to punches in the gut again. <laughs> And I think, no doubt, that's probably affected the players' confidence. I've heard you said, Matt, that it's going to take a lot for these players to get over the mental scarrings of being two goals up in front in previous games against Bournemouth and Villa and not have that in the back of the minds. And you could see the longer that game went on and the more Leicester grew into it after that hour mark, you could see it just we just again capitulated. And yeah, it's. I know. I know. We're probably going to talk later about the subs and a lot to be made. Certainly, the reaction after the game about the substitutes, but we just seem to we just seem that it's as well. We seem absolutely knackered after an hour, which I just for the life of me don't get. So yeah, very frustrating. Should have been a win. Yeah, Dave joins us as well. Don't know if you well. read that, but I was just saying, it's, for, certainly for me, it was uh, two points lost rather than one point gain. Sorry. No, no, sorry, mate, just because I was a little bit in my end there. But Dave joins us now as well. Dave, how, how are you feeling after that one? <clears throat> um, you know, I, I, I get, I sort of think the same sort of things that Warren was talking about there. Incredibly frustrating to not come away with a victory there. Um. But I'm I'm starting to find myself the, the, the mentality of this is pretty draining now. What we're seeing from these results, because by and large, I mean, you take away the last ten minutes of the three games where we've not won, where we should have, then we'd be in the comfortably in the top half of the table, and we'd be we'd be sitting here raving about how well our teams played, but we can't seem to get over the line. We can't seem to. And I, and I feel actually it, it's a mentality of what goes on in that in, in that side now. I think that when we get to certain stages of certain games, when we when we miss a decent chance to go further in front, when we've done that, it it I just I get a sense of inevitability. Certainly as us as fans, but it's almost that it's mirrored by what you see on the pitch. I, I look at the players and I think, well, are they are they playing around thinking well, we've tried so hard here to try and get a two nil three nil lead, cancel a game out. And now we haven't done that. It's backs against the wall and it just keeps happening again and again and again. And I think that's that's a, a dangerous road to be going down, really, especially if you look at the Premier League table now and we're only five games in. Um, though for the first 80, I thought we were absolutely fine. <clears throat> I don't think they had many chances at all. Um, it felt to me like we had we were able to attack at will 
I, I, I felt. Um, yes, yeah, sit back. Yeah, but as soon as we got the ball, we had the outlets that we've not had for quite some time. We had an outlet in in, in that he looks absolutely brilliant. Um, he, he was there. I think you had Calvert Lewin again look lively, look like he was more about himself. You had the Corey who looked like he was playing slightly better. You had uh, Mangala in midfield too. I thought he was really good as well. And we we should have been two or three up there. Um, and, and we weren't. <laughs> Maybe it's a bit easier. The fact that we actually went and took a point from the opposition equalising rather than the defeat we got in the, in, in the two when we were 2 0 up. But um, it, incredibly frustrating. Any other time of season, had we not put into context what we've already seen so far in them opening four games, I'd be thinking this is a pretty decent point we've got there. Frustrated that we didn't go and win and get three points, absolutely. But that would have been a decent draw we've gone and got against a side that unfortunately we're probably going to be fighting towards the, the lower end of the Premier League now. So um, a hell of a lot to digest, certainly mentally, in my point of view. And thinking about dice, thinking about subs, I haven't quite gone through that yet. Um, thinking more about the performance. And, you know, I've a lot of us have slated dice. Uh, a lot of, lot of us, a lot of fans, high percentages we've seen. One Sean Dice out. Maybe I'll get hammered for this, but there have been large spells of when we've lost those games where we've played really, really well. Um, maybe the main concern is on him not being able to do it for for ninety odd, and then that goes into towards the substitutions. But um, it's all the more frustrating, isn't it? If you, if you thought you were going to lose a game and you were told we we're going to get beaten, the game is a lot easier to digest than leading one two nil, getting beat three two. Similar to this. We should have walked away with three points comfortably, I thought, as well, for three quarters of the game, and we didn't. Um, you know, and I'm seeing people saying the positives are there and various things, but the positives are there, yes, but the 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 issues have remained the same as to why we're not taking away three points. I mean, yeah, it's it's an interesting one for me this today because I got, I don't think there was a definitive point where we lost it, sorry, where, where we threw our lead away necessarily or where we could have won it. You know, we didn't have like a Calvert-Lewin, a 2-1 at Villa chance, did we, in the game? Like we had openings in the second half and we had moments, but could you say any, like we missed any big chances where we went 1-0 up? I can't really think of, of any. Like Dom has that shot where he goes through. I think he strikes it really well, actually, across the keeper and, and the keeper gets down to make a really good save, doesn't he? Um, at, at 1-0. But, but other than that, like we, we played well and we were bright and we, we got into good positions, but Often it was Lindstrom, we will talk about a bit more later on, who you know did really well to get into a space and couldn't quite find the, the pass. You know, in the eye, Riggles passed a few challenges, didn't he? And a left footed shot over the bar, I think, in the in the second half. So it's one of them where like I don't think there was necessarily a sub, you know, a sub that could have helped us or, or killed us. I don't know if it was a moment where we could have killed the game. It just like today just felt like one of them to me where there was loads of injuries, there's loads of lads on the pitch who weren't fully fit, there's loads of lads on the pitch who got off the sick bed and we just faded. And I and that, that's happened in recent weeks where I think we we faded for, for other reasons. But you know, I, I imagine today there's, there's there's a bit of context in that. So I don't know, it just just sort of felt like just just one of them really, well for want of a better phrase. I know that's not really the, the best expression of a podcast where we're trying to articulate ourselves and we think happened, but it just felt like one of them games where it just got away from us a little bit because we we, we didn't we didn't score the second goal. We didn't, we didn't get that moment, um, and because ultimately we've got a lot of lads in the squad who aren't fit or are just coming back from injury. But you, know, you, you mentioned the subs there, Warren, and I think I think the moment when it, it did sort of shift a little bit was when Lindstrom came off, wasn't it? And, and Harrison came on, and Harrison, you know, I was surprised to see him come on really because he, he one of those players that dies your name checked with his his long list on Thursday um, as, as being someone who who was. Um, who was ill coming into this week. Um, that just felt like a, a bit of a, you know, it's a winger for a winger, but it's a more defensive winger for someone who was giving us, you know, a chance to stretch Leicester. And it just felt like the knock-on effect was that was maybe that Mavidi, who'd been in the game in flashes, but at that point, it just felt like he attacked Garner at, at will. Um, and I don't know if it's because, you know, he was not concerned about Harrison going forward or Harrison wasn't up to it when he came on, but it just felt like that side completely opened up when that change was made. And, and playing Garner there as well in the first place, I, I know it's, you know, he, he was one of the players as well who he listed as being ill and not fully fit. 
this week. And, you know, for me, why, I, I don't know what Roman Dixon's done wrong in the two games he's had to not warrant at least the start a fully fit young lad. I know, I know he's young and we talk about experience, but I think possibly he might have been that little bit more pacey down that side and just playing in his natural position rather than trying to put a square peg in a round hole in James Garner. And like you said, as soon as Lindstrom come off, who I think for me, I, th- I agree he played well, but I think for me the jury's still out with him. He should score when it's nil-nil and the cross goes in at the back post. He has to score that and it's another chance that goes begging and... You know, maybe if he does score that and then we do get the second goal, it could be a different story. Um, but yeah, I, I the subs have been a, a big thing, like you said, Matt. And Jack Harrison coming on, I, I just don't think he's good enough. I I, I wanted to give him yeah. I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt so mm-hmm. many times. I think you talk about his work rate and you talk about what he brings to the squad in terms of his ability to bring something to the system that we play and his ability to work really hard down that side, provide cover for the right back, particularly when we haven't got a lot of the ball. But there was, I counted today, there was 10 times he gave that ball away. And and not just, by the way, putting a cross in it, it, you know, it ricocheting and going out for a throw or something like that. He, he physically gave the ball to Leicester players and he just put the mm-hmm. onus back on them. I don't like digging players out. I don't like being negative, but, Sooner or later, you've got to address these issues, which are costing us points. And mm. he, he for me today, was one of the reasons why it didn't work. Like I said, he gave the ball away far too many times. And I just don't think he offered enough cover, you know, to support James Garner. The goal came from a mistake from Garner for me as well. I know we're going to talk about, you know, what happens as the corner goes in. And, you know, we should, the defensive partnership should be doing a lot better there. And I totally agree with that. But before the corner was given, James Garner, for me, bottles out of a header with against Vardy and we, they get the corner from it. I think if you've got Dixon in there, and this is just my feeling, I think if you've got Dixon in there, you've just got someone who knows the position and who will maybe not do anything different in that situation. But again, like I said, I just don't know what that lad did wrong in his first two games to not at least be given a start today. But, you know... <laughs> It just, it's just the momentum and the mentality of it again. You, like you said there, you know, you bring Jack Harrison on and it just, it's like the team almost sent it. We're, we're trying to consolidate. We know that we'll we'll keep it tight. We're trying to keep it tight now. And maybe that, you know, Dave, Dave said it earlier, if we come away with a win there, you go, yeah, great substitution. But there's a pattern developing here now where yeah. he's either not making the right substitutions or when he's bringing subs on, they're not the ones that could benefit the team. And there's a pattern of conceding goals. And not just, you know, I know Villa scored that wonder strike last week to go 3-2 up, but we're conceding a lot of A, set pieces and B, goals, which I think we could deal with. So it's... it's. I, I, I want to agree with you, Matt, when you say about the context and you say about the certain players there who... Might not have been fully fit, and we've gone there. And I, I, you know what? I can't fault the effort today. I can't. I thought everyone gave a good shift in today, but there's key moments in games that are letting us down and costing us points. And I think Leicester weren't that great, and I think they will certainly be down that end of the table and fighting for relegation. And it's just a psychological thing. We can go there and win. It just puts us, you know, a couple of points ahead of them. The Palace games to look forward to gives everyone a little spring in the step with a win there, and. Again, it just feels like now Palace again is going to be huge. So yeah, it's I get what you're saying, but I just I just think it could have been handled better, and I think certain selections could have been better as well, both with the starting eleven and with the substitutes that came on. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that that that's all fair, and I suppose it's you know Warren touched upon it there, Dave, as as much as you can talk about substitutions of one of Michael Keane or Tarkovsky just takes ownership in that situation in the box instead of getting each other's way and. And head that away, which you know is, is what they're effectively in the team to do. Then, then we could clear that, and we we, we could well hang on for for the victory. Um, and I know you know it's about to say only because only because you know one today, but it, it kind of felt like a, a very apt physical embodiment of their their partnership down the years, doesn't it? Uh, Lee's partnership in the, in the loosest sense there, obviously, because it's not really worked in, in any kind of unison to mm. great effect. But I mean, it's it's just. It's just comical, isn't it? Just a, a bit slapstick, and 
you know, when you think about Michael Keane, when you think about James Tarkovsky, those moments are exactly the moments you, you should want them in the team for. And, and even that's not really going well for either of them at the moment. No, that's right. And I think if the is there a lot of um couple of centre backs in the Premier League to win headers, dare to say Michael Keane's probably one that's up there because he's a he's a big fella and that's what he's renowned for doing. You think of those two though, and I was I was only thinking about this as well today, because you know, in, in hindsight it's great, isn't it? I was thinking, do you know what? When they don't like try and head each other on that ball that comes in, you had Jake O'Brien in there, he's about a foot bigger than the pair of them, then that wouldn't have been an issue whatsoever, would it? But somebody comes in. We all three of them would, probably would have gone for it, wouldn't they? <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point, yeah. Um, an interesting point somebody made to me, <laughs> excuse me, was um, James Tarkovsky doesn't actually look that good without Branthwaite alongside him. And, and I think that's a really good point. Um, and, you know, in, in literally the same size, and we don't know how good Jake O'Brien is going to be for us, do we? It, it seems like he's got the similar similar trend that uh, Branthwaite had when we first loaned him and he come back and all that sort of thing, which worked out really, really good for us. But um, that, I think that was a really interesting point. That those two were at Burnley for several years together, weren't they? I'm right in saying. I don't think they were, you know. I think that's one of those misconceptions where they, they really they went together, together at different times, yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, well, they've both been at Burnley then <laughs> for uh, mostly relegation fights. Now, what the the point that we generally keep on making here about the substitutions, perhaps not go too much into that because it's 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 become a common theme, hasn't it? Talking about the subs, but you look at the shape of the side, you look at where various players who are quite versatile can play. You could have easily put James Garner into the midfield. You could easily have done that. You've, you've got Decore there playing next to Mangala. That's not Decore's role in our side, is it? Playing sort of just the central midfield role. Well, he's actually he's got called the midfield today, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. And, and you know, I'd, I'd expect someone like James Garner to have a little bit more discipline from that. Um, why aren't these things being seen from Dice early doors? Um, you know, you can see these things in games yourself. We're sitting here watching the telly at home. And and that's an issue I've had with Dice for, for quite some time now. Um, the patterns of games seem to be so familiar that, like I think both of you indicated, you sort of get that feeling, that inevitability that it's going to happen. This is going to happen. The issue is going to happen again. Um, I, I'm at that feeling now. If we actually have a chance and we don't take it, that means we're going to lose. That that That's what I have in my mind when, when things aren't, aren't going the right way for us. And it feels like we've got sliding door moments all over the place, really. When when I'm talking there about missing an opportunity, you mentioned like Calvert Lewin's it was a fantastic effort. It's a good save. Um when when Lindstrom tries to play that ball over to him as well. That slides in, there's there's the game. Uh, and and we I'm, I'm pretty confident we would have actually gone on to win that one, regardless of how poor we've been in added on time. Um I disagree with what what I was saying about Lindstrom, I thought he looked dreadful. To be to be honest, um, I thought really? he looked, uh, yeah, I thought I thought I, I, thought, he looked, I thought I think there's definitely something to work there with him. Like, oh no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that he's got when he what you I think dreadful is really harsh on today. I just, I just feel like it. He just. So that's the thing with like him he when he's the last couple of games where he's been in front of goal, he's looked shocking. And that's the concern for me because you've signed him to chip in with goals and he should have scored again today. But I think he definitely created problems for Leicester. I don't I don't deny that he's got what we need uh, and what his attributes are, absolutely not. Um, and, and, and I think and expect from what we've seen so far in the bits and pieces we have that he's he's definitely got everything you need to operate that, that side. But when we were talking about having Garner at right back and you've got an inexperienced, brand new signing playing right in front of him. That's an issue for Dice. Why he's gone and done that, which I, I think you sort of referred to a little bit then, Warren. But I, I just felt he looked a little bit soft to me. He looked a little bit like it, 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 it a little bit of a cliche, I think, really. But when you see new players enter the Premier League, it takes them a while to get used to what it's about. I felt it was like that with him. I felt that look, don't get me wrong, he was doing, he was doing everything he needed to do. He's in the positions he needed to be in. He's quick as well. There was there was good things to see from him. I just I I, I didn't feel that in that game in particular against a side that are gonna an, an away game. Firstly, um, I, I I just thought he looked really poor. Um, and look, he was taken off as well, wasn't he? Was he taken off for ironically Harrison on the hour? 
Um, yeah. Dare I say we, it? We <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and agree with you on yeah. that. That's certainly not something I'd like to do. But I just away from you two lads. I didn't. I didn't think he looked great at all. I, I, I just think there's definitely like like I've seen enough from him to suggest that this is stuff to work with. Like we're talking about the lad here, he didn't play any football really last year either. That was his first start in the Premier League today. And like Warren's right, you know, in front of goal, he's he's melted so far. And that is something he's clearly got to improve at. But sorry about can... Matt, that, that's that's the thing that I, that doesn't bother me about him, which is quite funny. Because I know that that's gonna happen. You look at the state of he's that. Getting into position, like, I... he? like He's yeah, getting that's, into, that's he's what getting I mean. Dangerous positions, like, and I think, and I think, like, he, he offers a sort of completely different to Harris, and like, he will run him behind and like give you give you that option. He's got natural speed, the things so we can stretch the game, and I think you saw that. Well, like, you know, like I say before, but when he went off, as much as you know, he wasn't setting up loads of chances and, and testing the keeper all the time, but all of a sudden they felt like they could just push on down that side because they didn't have to worry about what was going the other way because Harrison's not going to run in behind us. He's going to come short for the ball. Mm-hmm. He's going to protect the fullback, And all of a sudden you, you lose that that, that dynamic. So I, 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 just, I just look at him and think there's, there's definitely stuff there. I think he carries the ball well. I think he gets into good positions. He runs in behind. And we haven't got enough of that at all. Is, is there not, it's not something to look at that day where I explain about the, the sort of the way in which he, he shaped us up here, Dice and the way in which he, the players he put in certain positions. Not scope there to put him, swap him with McNeil as well. Well, McNeil's you know, playing behind striker now, isn't he? So. Well, yeah, he's playing. Well, the, the way him and Dai are, I think there's really, there's a lot of work he can do with there to just to move them apart. There's lots of different things we can do there with players, and that's a very long time since we've been able to say that. Um, But, I, I, yeah, I mean, with and die. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm uh, saying such harsh things about Lindstrom because I thought I, I just like really watching and die. I think he's an, he's an absolute threat for us. He's a mm-hmm. we've signed an, an outstanding player there. I think, um, and it, it's mad that how poor he was at Sheffield United, which gets me in the in the Premier League. He he didn't he didn't do well there at all, did he? But well, he played one game for them in the Premier League, didn't he? And was it, it only one game, was it? Yeah, he struggled at Marseille. Uh, that's, that's, that's how bad he was. He only got one game. He was that crap. He didn't play him again. <laughs> <laughs> this is me terrible. Yeah, no, he's that wrong. But he's... But, um, no, I was just going to say, like, I think that's, you know, what's the finish on the eye, Warren? Because he was, you know, he, had, he has got magic in them for you, hasn't he? And it's just, there's just moments where you, he's got the ball in a tricky situation and... That, being conditioned to watch us down the years, you're expecting our, our players to lose the ball when, when two or three opposition players converge on them, but he just, you know, rolls his foot over it, does a little body swerve, finds yeah. his way through, and obviously the end product today as well, great finish across the keeper into the to bottom to the bottom corner. Um, you know, like they, like Dave said, I think we've we signed a really talented lad there. It's it's nice to have someone, isn't it, like that? You can, you know, regardless of the situation, regardless of us being, I think. 19th in the league now of the fair play record, which is mad. Um, things are bad from that point of view, but it's good to at least have a, a player you can look forward to watching each week. Yeah, do you know what? I hope we stay up on the fair play record, by the way, last game of the season. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, do you know what? what we're, 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 not, we're not ahead there behind someone on that. We should be booting people. And, I know, and I know. Stuff. We should be the other way around, shouldn't we? Um, we've got a player who can use a direct runner, and we haven't had someone like that for a long time, and it I've said there about with Lindstrom, the jury's still out, and it is, but there's something there's the speed there, and there's again someone on the opposite side who can be a bit more direct. And but with Inti, yeah, I mean that goal, I thought it was fantastic. How many times down the years have we seen players get into that position and sky it or hit it wide or it gets blocked? And he I know it comes off the post, but he's placed that. He's really gone for that and he knows what he's doing in that situation. It was so instinctual and it was so the control off the pass as well. I mean, Ashley Young's pass, I'm I'm Ashley Young's biggest critic. I don't think he should be in an Everton shape, but it was a great ball from Ashley Young into it, in front of him, into his feet, and he took it so, so well. He was knackered at the end, and Dice will come out and say, I, I took him off because he was just ran out of gas. But again, <laughs> why is he running out of gas five games into the season? I know we work hard and, and everything else, but I think just the fact that he offers you that out ball and he offers you something different and he'll keep hold of the ball for you, I don't see why you wouldn't keep him on, you know, even if he is tired. You know, just, just throw him alongside uh, Calvert-Lewin. But I, I, I just, you know, last words on entire I hope you don't mind, Matt, if I just go on to name a couple of other players who I thought play well today. But I, I think that's where I've got hope and promise is that once he fully settles and once we get maybe a few of these players back, 
there is there is green shoots there to, to work from and, and hopefully we'll start scoring more and climbing up the table. But just going on to a couple of players who I thought played really well, we touched on Decore there. I actually thought he really suited that role today alongside Mangala. I thought the pair of them were absolutely brilliant. For me, Decore was in a bit more of a defensive position, but he did really well at winning the ball back. And it was almost like he, he the pressure of playing a bit further up the pitch where he'd got to make something happen and he could sort of confuse himself a little bit. That wasn't there today. He got into a lot of good positions, doubling up with the fullback and, you know, blocking a lot of stuff in front of the back four. And then when we broke, I thought the passing of him and Mangala was something we struggled with in a lot of games, keeping hold of the ball, playing two, three passes together. A lot was made about possession in the week, wasn't it? And we actually, I think, at one point had 60-odd percent possession at one point in the game. And I think that was a largely down to, to the two lads in the middle there. And I thought, I know we've, McNeil's probably not played his best football in the centre this season, but I thought he had a very good game centrally as well and drifting out wide now and again. And this, there was a bit of interlink between him and the two wingers. So I, I liked what I saw in terms of that. And, and you know, when, when we've got a, maybe a, just a gate to come back and when we've got, you know, Garner in there, when we hopefully get a fifth full back one day, then, there's maybe changes we can make inside the middle of the park where we just keep that ball a bit better or maybe get a bit more creative. So there is negativity from today because we should be winning that game, but I don't think you could ignore some of the positives. And then people might listen to this and think, what's he on about? We've only got one point from five games. Like D Dice needs to go and he's not. And I actually, I, I, I put a tweet up. I don't think Dice, I, I said, I don't think Dice is getting the best out of these players. And I agree with that. I think they could get a lot more from him. I don't think they're as bad as one point from five games. And like I said earlier, I think for the first 60, 70 minutes, there was proof of that. So there, there is reason to be positive. There is reason for hope, but it has to change quickly. We have to stop conceding these silly goals. We have to get over this mental barrier of when we go in front, not just shutting up shop and, you know, a mistake costing us. We have to be much stronger. I mean, how many times down the years we said about that being an issue with Everton mentally, we're not brilliant. We're not, we're not, um, you know, we're mentally scarred, if you like, from, and we just haven't had that winning mentality. That needs to change very quickly if we are to climb up this league and, and get into a position where come February, March, April, we're not looking over our shoulder at the bottom three. We're looking at, can we be comfortable, you know, going into those final games of the season? Yeah, I just, just wanted to say on, on the idea of, um, I've seen about three or four kids this week who Everton tops with his name on, which is, like, nice. It's nice we've got, like, that type of player again because for so long, I think it's one of them with, like, you know, if you're a youngster who's for Everton, like, which player excites you to want to go out and get the, the name on the back of your kit unless you get the goalie on with Pickford on. But, you know, I've seen, yeah. I've seen kids with, you know, an Everton player's name, a new Everton player's name on the shirt. And it, it's nice because he's that sort of player. Isn't he? You know, the young, the youngsters go in the match, you're going to absolutely love him. I think he does all those those mad tricks that are going to go viral on, on TikTok and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. It's like when you went to school back in the day, didn't you? You started doing the tricks that they were doing on the game at the weekend and all that. Surprised a few of them didn't have Pickford on the back of the uh, the outfit kits as well, <laughs> as well as the golf. <laughs> uh, the way we've been. Uh, just, just on one, no, there with, with positivity. Uh, Mangala was someone I watched. Mangala, sorry, he was someone I watched quite a bit today. Thought he was absolutely fine. Um, quite intrigued to see what you do with the Rabunum alongside him. The, that this is once again where there's options there for Dice. I think that that in um, an interesting way puts more pressure on Dice as well, which is which remains to be seen in terms of who he picks when the, these are all fit and apparently don't all have the flu. Um, and just him when he got. Oh, I, I still can't get it out of my out my mind that that last ten minutes, he was one on the top of my list who just sort of fell apart. Because I don't know if, if you'd agree with this, but every single time he got the ball, he started trying to be like Sedan, just ripping players apart and then and trying to get the ball forward. And I don't know whether it's you know, I mean, but how old is he, the kid? He's what? Mangala? Is he? He's not. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's, he's, he's mid. Oh, is he mid? Well, he should know better then, because it, it's just a simple. Solution there is just lay it off to one of your fullbacks, knock it back to Pickford. He's he's trying to skin whoever's in the middle there. Yes, we, we've they've conceded. Yes, we're going to be fuming. They're still trying to go and get the winner against these, but a little bit more common sense is needed there because the amount of times they broke the ball off him, and then we're we're sprinting back to try and tackle, and then you, you're thinking that they could go and the way it happens and they go and win the game. Um, but again, an, another familiarity with them all. Fantastic eight nines out of tens for. 
70, 80 minutes and then just just fall apart looking like they've never played with each other for the last 10. Yeah, same old story in, in some sense, but listen, I think we found enough positives there anyway to to go through the rest of our Saturday night, but we will wrap it up there anyway. Uh, cheers to Warren, cheers to Dave, like I said at the start of the podcast. If you are watching us on YouTube, hit like it, subscribe. Let us know what you think about any of the stuff we've spoken about, uh, especially on Lindstrom. I'm really interested to see what people have to, to say about him because I think he's one of those players that's. Uh, I knew you were going to say that. Divided opinion. No, I think it's. I think it's probably like 50 <laughs> No, I know, I know. I'm not. I'm not trying to just dig Dave out, but um, but yeah, I, I think it's interesting to see what people think about what he can offer. Um, so yeah. let us know if you listen to us, like, subscribe, leave us a rate, and leave us a review. All those things help. Uh, yeah, we'll be back on Monday. Dave and on Blue Monday, and building up to that. Big games. Feels like it's always a big game against Crystal Palace. Got some part of these days, doesn't it? Every single year, uh, but it is always a big one. Excellent today. Uh, always Palace. Always Palace. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Off the top of these, and we'll speak to you again soon.